26-year-olds using everything, hydrocodone, Xanax, Soma, they're dependent on all of those. They use other things, but those are the substances they're addicted to. Um, but reports that hydrocodone is the worst. Been to treatment three times, unwilling to go to treatment again. Uh, they all live on the same big piece of property. She lives uh, with her boyfriend who drinks. Her father is an alcoholic. Her mother is addicted to pills. Her sister lives down the road and is also addicted to pills. Um, she came to my outpatient uh, practice. Um, you know, first choice was, wow, you really need some extended treatment. Um, she also had bipolar disorder. Um, but for better or for worse, um, we decided that, that she at least deserved a trial of Suboxone. And so she came into the office. She was in opiate withdrawal. We gave her some Suboxone. She took the Suboxone. She was able to test negative for all substances for about six weeks. She relapsed to Xanax. We looked at some things she could do about that. To make the long story short, unfortunately, she was never able to stop all substances, take her bipolar medications, and be functional um, in a way that I think all of us would agree you know, uh, could meet the definition of functional. So this is an example of a medication which has some utility, but which has to be very carefully chosen. And in this case, the fact that she took a lot of different substances, some of which didn't bind to the opiate receptor. She had an underlying mental health disorder, and she had an environment that, that couldn't or didn't support sobriety, meant that this outpatient treatment wasn't useful. 46-year-old woman, alcohol dependent in remission for five years. 20 Vicodin daily, unable to stop, having a lot of mood symptoms. She was very involved in AA for the first two years of her sobriety from alcohol, and then kind of went to a meeting now and again, wasn't very involved. She didn't want to go to treatment. She didn't want anyone actually to know that she had developed a dependence on pills, and in her case, sought treatment before anyone knew that she had a dependence on uh, pills. Uh, here we have this example of cross-addiction, someone who thought that some hydrocodone would be safe. She was started on it. I don't remember whether it was dental work or an orthopedic injury, found that she liked it and worked her way up to 20 Vicodin um, a day. Um, so essentially she was started on um, uh, Suboxone uh, at 8 milligrams a day. She was tapered down. She stopped the Suboxone, and she wanted something to help with craving and to help maintain uh, abstinence. We have a couple of different choices. So one possibility would be to put her on naltrexone. So she had alcohol dependence, was in remission, developed opiate dependence. It's a perfectly reasonable option in her case. Um, unfortunately, she hallucinated. So it was a reasonable option that in her case didn't turn out to be uh, a, a good uh, choice. But I've had other cases where people started with one addiction, developed the other who did uh, do well on uh, naltrexone. Uh, another possibility, and that is that a medication isn't what she needs. So if we think about the process of getting better from an addiction, and we talk about sort of over what timeline that happens, and, and I have uh, heard it said, and I've seen it in practice, that when given a medication like uh, Suboxone, someone gets significantly better over a period of time. Their consequences, their craving, their loss of control uh, goes down significantly. But what I think we have to remember is that we are still tickling the addiction systems here. We're still binding to the opiate receptor with something from outside. And we may still be disrupting the dopamine and the serotonin pathways. And it's possible that she needs a certain amount of time off substances until she'll get to that point where she'll be as functional and as stable as she was when she was on uh, Suboxone. 
And this actually is what did happen with her. She had a fabulous therapist. Her therapist actually had her write a letter to each doctor that she had ever gotten hydrocodone from and tell them, Dr. McQueen is my doctor. I am an addict. Please never prescribe me this substance again. You know, huge kudos for her for doing that. She got back into a 12-step program. She made that leap from not only completing her steps to becoming a sponsor. And we had this little foray with the naltrexone that didn't work because she hallucinated, but in the end did well. Now solid recovery from both the alcohol and the opiates. I have a case very much like her, though, where it went a little bit differently. Um, similar story, um, although this was had had some alcohol problems not as severe and developed an addiction to tramadol, also known as Ultram, and started on Suboxone, stayed on uh, Suboxone. She stayed on Suboxone for a little more than a year. She tapered down. She got off it, um, and, and she called or emailed me one day and said essentially that she had spent the day before and searched every nook and cranny in her house for a pill. She hadn't found one. She didn't know what she would have done if she had found one, and she didn't go to any other lengths to find one. But she was worried. Um, and essentially, she sat down and she wrote out a list of the pros and cons of going back on Suboxone. She talked with her spouse, her daughter, her sponsor about that. She shared that with me, and she went back on Suboxone. And she's on Suboxone now, and she's doing well on it. So um, this is a medication that has some utility. I'm not a huge fan of it. I don't think it works as well as research tells us it works. But I also don't want you to walk away saying that Dr. McQueen said that this medication was horrible and it never works and no one should be on it. Um, there are people who uh, I've worked with who have done well on it. There are a number of medications that are up and coming. It's not FDA approved. We use a lot of topiramate, which is Topamax. We can use it because it's approved to do other things. And it seems that it may decrease the craving for alcohol. Interestingly enough, it may decrease the craving for food. So we use it a lot in people who are status post bypass surgery or other bariatric uh, procedures. This is where I'm finally going to get back to that question of marijuana. There, was th there is this uh, drug, Ramona Bant. It's a cannabinoid antagonist. Um, so it binds to the receptor and blocks it. And it looked like it was the anti-munchy drug and that it may have some really cool cardiovascular effects. So that brings up a question for me. If an antagonist is really good for the heart, does that mean that too much of an agonist is bad for the heart? I don't know, but I think it's a good question as to whether chronic exposure to cannabinoids from outside the body are hazardous to the cardiovascular uh, system. It doesn't matter just when it looked like you needed stock in this medication. The incidence of side effects, especially very bad depression, are too big, and it no longer is available in Europe, and it doesn't look like it's going to go anywhere. Um, for stimulants, there's nothing FDA approved, so we'll throw anything at them. Um, baclofen, uh, disulfram, which is hand abuse, uh, topiramate, all of those are available. Tiagabine, it looks promising. It's not available, so we don't know uh, yet. Um, uh, Abilify also. I mean, there are all sorts of things that in one research study showed promise, but then when you tried to replicate it, didn't. So, you know, we're at a loss, but we will try anything in anyone, especially if it turns out that they have some other reason to take one of these meds. They have migraine headaches, great, some topiramate. They have muscle spasm or spinal cord injury, try some baclofen. They have bipolar disorder, refractory depression, let's try some Abilify. Um, and this is just to remember that medications focus on the physical uh, side and somewhat on the psychological and not so much on the spiritual side. Treatment focuses on the spiritual and the psychological side, not so much on the physical, but it takes all these sides uh, for someone to get really better. And it's been fun. <laughs>